Overclocking is like free gaming performance, right? Well, in a way, yes, despite the higher power consumption figures, which is pretty expensive these days, overclocking is a great way to eke out some gaming performance from your PC hardware. And gamers have been overclocking for decades now, and for good reason, because it's in the chase of them, them frame rates. This is an RX 570, which was from my previous video, the RX 570 in 2023. And a viewer did say that this is a good overclocker, so I appreciate you've let me know and you've made this video possible because I wouldn't have thought about overclocking it, so yeah, thank you. To overclock a graphics card, I recommend using an application called MSI Afterburner. Not only does it allow you to overclock your graphics cards, but it allows you to monitor them too. And the overlay that I usually show in my benchmarking gameplay, that is MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuner Statistics Server. So these are some great applications that I recommend any PC gamer to install. And it's not just overclocking and monitoring that MSI Afterburner does too, it also does benchmarking. And this is actually how I do all of my benchmarks here on the channel. I use MSI Afterburner as it saves it in a nice convenient text file too. So yeah, MSI Afterburner is literally the lifeline of my channel. By the way, this is not a GPU overclocking guide. If you want to see me make one, let me know and I can get that made for you. I did make one a few years ago, but it was probably a very terrible video if I'm honest. So yeah, if you want to see one that's updated and modern for 2023, just let me know. Back to the RX 570 now, and I managed to get 1400 megahertz out of the core, which is a pretty substantial bump. And I got 1900 megahertz out of the memory too. So yeah, I did push it quite far. I could have probably pushed it a bit further. But at that point, I'm sacrificing stability, which I think no PC gamer should do, unless if I'm chasing for world records and stuff like that. And the cooler isn't the best either. This is only a little ITX card, and for what it is, the cooler is pretty good with two nice copper heat pipes. But you shouldn't really push this cooler too far. If you had something like a Sapphire Nitro, something like that, or an MSI Gaming X, I'd say you could probably push it a lot further as it would probably have a more robust VRM and stuff like that. But on a little card like this, I don't think you should be pushing it that far. And benchmarking today has been done on my normal system, which is a Ryzen 5 5600G, 16 gigabytes of CL17, 3600 megahertz DDR4 RAM running in dual channel mode, a one terabyte Sabrent Rocket NVMe Gen 3 SSD, and an Asus Strix B550-F gaming. I have used the same game settings as what I did in my RX 570 in 2023 video, but I recommend you to go and watch that video first as it will provide better context of this video. So if you wanna see that first, I recommend it, but let's get into the benchmarking figures. I'm trying out something new today with all the graphs on the screen so if you like this let me know because I think it makes me look a lot more professional so yeah let me know down in the comments below. Starting off with Unigen Superposition and overclocking here netted an 8% performance uplift going from 7040 to 7611 so yeah th this is a pretty good performance uplift with around 8% in performance for about 5 minutes of work not bad at all. And this was done at the 1080p medium preset both times, as this is what I like to use for older and slightly weaker graphics cards. Moving on to the games now, and the performance uplift when overclocked was around 10-11% to with the average frame rate, and around 12% with the 1% lows, resulting in a much smoother experience. So not only are your averages up a bit, but the 1% lows which are crucial to a smooth gaming experience are also increased as well. So gaming experience across the board has pretty much been improved. There were a few outliers here which did surprise me to say the least, and one of them is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It seemed to respond very well to the overclock, boosting the average up to 84 from 65. The 1% low also increased from 44 to 54, so this resulted in a way smoother experience and it felt a lot more smoother well, I say felt a lot more smoother, the benchmark looked a lot smoother because I didn't actually play it. <laughs> From this, I'm taking that Call of Duty really likes higher clocked graphics cards, whether this is memory or core or a mixture of both, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, overclocking your graphics card, especially if it's an RX 570, does seem to help quite a lot with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Dirt Rally 2 seemed to not like the overclock at all because 1% lows and average frame rates were reduced after the overclock. But I'm not sure if this is due to the overclock as this game does not have a built-in benchmark. 
so I can't fully 100% replicate it each time so this could be down to a discrepancy with my benchmarking methodology so performance for you should be better but in this benchmark it is down for whatever reason but this doesn't concern me that much overall most games responded very well to this overclock with a performance uplift of around 10 percent games like cyberpunk were on the up and yeah who doesn't like more performance so overclocking is definitely something i can recommend with around a 10 percent performance uplift on average when overclocked i can fully recommend overclocking the rx 570 and it only took me about five or ten minutes to overclock this thing because in msi afterburner it's just that easy really there were a bit of there was a bit of trial and error where i did push the overclock a bit too far but if you push a gpu overclock a bit too far your system will just shut down restart with stock settings so it's not really that scary this day and age if I spent a bit more time tuning it, I could have squeezed out a tiny bit more performance from this thing, but this is the thing with overclocking. There are a lot of variables included. It depends on the silicon lottery, what graphics card you've got, what board it's on, the thermal constraints in your case, and how worn your graphics card is, because with the RX 570 in particular, a lot of these were mined on. And sometimes an overclock may seem stable in the benchmarks, but when you come to the games, it does start crashing and stuff like that. I had a similar issue with my RTX 3080 where it was totally fine in Unigen Heaven. And when I went to play Battlefield, it was crashing sporadically after around 40 minutes to an hour, something like that. So it's one thing to look out for. Overclocks may be sometimes a bit deceiving. With that being said, I'm going to leave the video here. Do let me know if you want to see the overclocking guide for graphics cards and I might also make an undervolting guide too because in 2023 with the TDP of some of these graphics cards, undervolting is not necessarily a bad idea. And thanks for watching the video, like it if you liked it, stay subscribed for more tech content and I'll catch you in the next one.